Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never practice nunchucks in a crowded room. Never eat chole before a road trip. Always take your shirt off before you iron it. Don't take a call near a swimming pool. And don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. In his replies on the debate on the motion of thanks on the President's address in both houses of Parliament, Prime Minister Narendra Modi took us back seven decades to count what he sees as the Nehru Gandhi dynasty's errors across our independent history. This gives us the cue for another question. What is the biggest, the most consequential political blunder made by any party or leader in independent India? It is challenging to name just one, so we would list three. We are also confining our search to the past 50 years. As we go along, I will also put them in my order of significance or consequentiality. To clarify, however, how we define such a blunder. First, it has to be purely related to our politics. Any policy errors, economic, foreign, social, are excluded. This is confined to pure politics, this discussion. Second, the morality and propriety of politics is no criterion to judge what is worse or what is worst. And third, a big qualification to be really bad, feature among the three, and then top this sad list, a blunder must have consequences that altered the course of politics for decades. That's how we qualify to be on this list. The longer the impact is felt, the worse is the error. At which point, I shall name my choice of the three worst. I am only listing them chronologically right now. Later, I might give you a ranking. So number one, Indra Gandhi targeting the RSS, Rashtriya Swayam Sebak Sangh, in the emergency and jailing thousands, in fact, many thousands of its workers, mostly anonymous people, sometimes with their families also. This is distinct from the Janasangh leaders she jailed. Number two, Rajiv Gandhi decided to sit out and not stake claim to form a government despite winning 197 seats, the largest number of seats in the Lok Sabha in 1989. The mandate was against him, he said, and he would respect it. Never mind, this was the largest party by far in that Lok Sabha. In 2004, that's the third, Atal Bihari Vajpayee and LK Advani advancing the general elections by nearly six months. Buoyed by their sweep in the three Hindi heartland states, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, they thought the hava was in their favor, so let's go ahead. The first question you are likely to ask me might be, why aren't you counting the imposition of the emergency among the, among the biggest political blunders? Why, just, why confine yourself to just the targeting and jailing of the RSS cadres under this? The answer is simple. Mrs. Gandhi got away with the emergency. Her 1977 defeat was a mere rap on the knuckles. It was over soon. In under three years, she was back in power with a huge majority. If, if in the 46 years after the emergency, her party has been in power for 25 years, it can only mean that the people of India forgave her for it and she got away with it. That's why emergency is excluded. It was her somewhat uncharacteristic targeting of the RSS that endured. First, it legitimized the RSS as a political force, elevating it to be her party's main ideological adversary. Until then, her party's strength was it never needed to fight one ideology. There was a Congress ideology, everything worked around it. She had assorted ideological adversaries. Sometimes it was her party's conservatives, some of them right of center or Swatantra Party's libertarian capitalism, that declined by 71. There were also streams of political left, not all of them, but streams of political left. But it was never the Congress ideology versus another. She brought this upon her party, mass arrests of the mostly unknown and relatively common folk of the RSS, in some cases their spouses and children as well. This brought it this brought the RSS wide respect and some awe. Socialist Jay Prakash Narayan also chose them as his frontline soldiers. 
In the course of time, the Janasang was reborn as the Bharatiya Janata Party (BJP) with the only ideological counter to the Congress, as Congress Party weakened in the following decades. Again, if Indira Gandhi hadn't targeted the RSS cadres, Modi wouldn't be sitting pretty with his second majority and looking at the third right now. The 1989 poll reduced Rajiv Gandhi's Congress to 197 from 414 of the 1984-85, which brings us to the next point. The 1989 poll reduced Rajiv Gandhi's Congress to 197 from 414 of 1984-85. The next largest party, Janata Dal, of which V P Singh was the biggest leader and the obvious choice for prime minister, had only 143 seats. The Congress staying out enabled an unlikely alliance of the sharpest political enemies, the BJP and the left, the BJP and the left, to install V P Singh with outside support. Rajiv Gandhi had obviously thought that such a such a contradiction will be short-lived, and it was, by the way, and he will be back in a fresh election. That didn't happen. He miscalculated on several things. The biggest was not understanding the risk of opening up the door for L K Advani to package the B J P as a national alternative to the Congress. Advani's party soon hit three figures in Lok Sabha, and with the Congress declining, was able to shed its untouchability for enough regional parties to form a coalition by 1996. That failed. Then 1998. The key to ridding the party of its untouchability was the acceptance of alliance with the BJP by its ideological opposites, the Mandal parties and the left in 1989. This was the 1989 gift from Rajiv Gandhi to the BJP. His party might have got power for 15 years subsequently, the Congress party, but it continued to weaken. This one miscalculation by Rajiv Gandhi ended the Congress epoch. in indian politics and in 2014 began the bjp's think about it the congress gave up power with 197 mp's in 1989 while all coalitions for the next 20 years 1996 98 99 2004 were led by a party with fewer seats the number was crossed by the congress itself only in 2009 leading a coalition marginally with 206 seats this this only by the way if for our analysis we are looking at only looking at coalitions and excluding narsimha rao's minority government with 230 plus seats we are only talking of coalitions by the way excluding the congress's minority government in 1991 under narsimha rao 1991 96 Rajiv's inability to see the inevitability of the coalitions and ceding power lazily to his most vicious adversaries changed the course of Indian politics and history. Which brings us to the third in our list of blunders. By January 2004, BJP was in a heady mood, having swept the three Hindi heartland states. What happened here? They presumed was now going to happen in the rest of their catchment states as well. That is UP, Bihar, etc. Their think tank, led by Pramod Mahajan and the usual hangers-on around Advani, concluded it was time to advance elections and ride the tide. The only one skeptical about this, Vajpayee, was outnumbered. There was there was also a barely concealed motive driving the Advani group. that that vajpayee's health won't last 5 years that he was already declining and that will give advani a smooth succession within their government for three quarters india had averaged 8% growth this was also reason enough they thought to launch the india shining campaign not realizing that three quarter quarters but was too short a period in that heady mood the bjp forgot that the one thing which had brought them to power that is winning and keeping their coalition allies together the result was a spectacular loss of power with the bjp reduced to 138 just seven below the congress but with so many regional parties and likely coalition allies rediscovering the old untouchability after the gujarat riots bjp lost power not only did this bring congress to power heading the upa for a decade it also ended the careers of advani and all his peers all his peers the intervening period gave narendra modi the time to prepare and rise 
first within his party, then in national profile. Now we come to the rankings. I would put Rajiv Gandhi's at the top as its impact on India's future politics has been the most dramatic, the greatest. The reason I rank it ahead of his mother's legitimization of the RSS is simply because she had been able to still keep it marginalized until 1984 and even after her death, Rajiv Gandhi reduced the BJP to just two seats in December 1984. In fact, there's been sufficient evidence in the 1984 elections that the RSS actually, because they saw the national interest in their view being served more by a, the Congress party being, being in power, by a stable government under Rajiv Gandhi coming in power, that a lot of their cadres and a lot of their people either voted for Rajiv Gandhi or did not campaign sufficiently for the BJP. That is why I do not, that is why I do not put Indra Gandhi's jailing, jailing of RSS cadres and the legitimization of the organization on top of this list of the three worst decisions. If Rajiv hadn't given up power so easily in 1989, politics, he was complacent. Politics of the subsequent decades would have played out or could have played out very differently. To that extent, he compounded his mother's blunder. She gave the RSS a national political profile and respect. He opened the doors for the BJP. Advani's blunder, on the other hand, lies essentially in the fact that it destroyed his own ambition. Of course, it paved the way for, for the rise of Modi, who just thanked him with the Bharat Ratna, because but for that blunder by Advani, Modi would not have risen to this position. He got a window of 10 years, a full decade, which, which he made the full use of.